Hello, my name is Sergio Peñe, and I'm very pleased to be here and present you the work that we have been carrying out with Batista Soran and Federica Calebro on ensemble learning based gene regulatory network inference. Let me first present you very quickly the concept of gene regulatory networks, or GRN for short. According to the central dogma of molecular biology, genes that are encoded in the genome are transcribed to form mRNAs, which are then translated into protein, which will have a functional role in the cells. So the definition of a GRN would be a set of interacting molecular regulators, in our case, transcription factors that will control the creation of the gene product of, of other target genes that could also be transcription factors. GRN uh, will have important role in biology, for example, in the adaptation of the orga organisms in changing environments, and also the differentiation of different tissues or the morphogenesis. How can we infer GRNs from uh, data? Uh, the data-driven way to infer GRNs starts with a gene expression matrix which records for each transcription factor and each target gene the level of expression in different conditions, which could be different tissues or different uh, sources of food, for example. Then we will use this data to, uh, to compute a score matrix that will uh, record the scores of relatedness between each transcription factor and each one of the possible target genes. Then the highest scores are chosen in order to infer the GRN, inferring the links between the regulators and the target genes. Among the different families of data-driven GRN inference, we can mainly focus on the correlation or mutual information family. Um, which takes uh, one vector of expression of a transcription factor at a time, one vector of a target gene, it computes the mutual information or the correlation and uses these measures in order to compute the score of relatedness between transcription factor and a target gene. There are also important methods based on, on regression algorithms. In this case, the goal is to predict the level of expression of a target gene as a function of the uh, levels of expression of the transcription factors. Then we will compute a feature importance for each transcription factor regarding the regression task in order to score the link between the transcription factor and the target gene. More recently, another uh, family of methods based on classification algorithm was proposed. It's very similar to the regression one, but in this case, we will first uh, apply discretization to the levels of expression of the target gene in order to use a classification algorithm to predict the discrete level of expression of the target gene as a function of the levels of expression of the transcription factor. Then we also compute a feature importance to score the links between transcription factors and target genes. In the literature, it has been shown that combining different GRN inference methods to form ensembles of methods uh, tends to produce better results and also robust results across different data. In this paper of 2012, Marbach et al. presented a community ensemble of 35 methods. However, in this case, we can have some drawbacks. For example, we have higher runtimes we will need more computer resources and uh, including some of the methods could be detrimental to the prediction task. So the objective of our work is to design small, robust and efficient ensembles of GRN inference methods in order to get the advantages of using ensembles and limit the drawbacks. To do so, we rely on benchmark datasets that will uh, contain gene expression matrices and also GRN ground truth we will use a genetic algorithm to build a population of efficient ensembles, and then we will mine this population of efficient ensembles using frequent item sets to detect uh, the methods that are frequently co-selected together. These methods will serve us to make, to design these small and robust ensembles that we will assess using PCA and also uh, standard evaluation measures. Regarding the uh, benchmark evaluation setup, 
we used the evaluation protocol designed by Marbach et al. in 2012. For the evaluation measures, we rely on standard metrics such as the IUROC and the IUPR. And regarding the data sets, we used the Dream5 Challenge benchmark data set that contains three real world data sets from different organisms and one in silico data set that contain simulated data. Regarding the base methods for inference, we used uh, the 17 methods that are programmed in the Grenadine uh, library that is based on SciPy and scikit learn methods. In practice, there are four methods based on correlation or mutant information. There are also met, uh, methods based on SVM and also ensembles of trees, such as random forest gradient boosting and data boost, for example, both in uh, regressors and classifiers. There are also two methods based on linear regressor stability and one Bayesian rich regress, uh, or BRS for short. Now let me show you how we will build this population of good ensemble candidates. The idea is first to take the gene expression matrix and compute the score matrices for each one of our methods. So in our case, the 17 methods uh, programmed in Grenadine. Then we will um, make each of our individuals of the genetic algorithm choose a given number of methods to build an ensemble. So here, uh, the individuals have a binary genome and a one, a gene equal to one stands for, I select this method. So in this case, for example, we're selecting the first and the last method. Then we will simply standardize the scores of the chosen methods using a Z score, and we will compute the average score. This average score will be used to infer the GRNs by selecting the most promising scores. And we will compare the inferred GRN to the benchmark GRN in order to give the fitness, uh, so the quality of uh, the ensemble. Then we can use a classical scheme for genetic algorithms. So we initialize a population of 100 genomes with a probability for each gene to be on equal to the uh, parameter p in it. Then we will compute the quality, the fitness of uh, each one of these 100 genomes. We will then apply a tournament selection to select the best, uh, uh, the best individuals to um, produce the next generation. We will take the children and we will mutate them and also apply some crossover to add some vari variation. And we repeat these steps for a number equal to 10 of generations. At the end, we will return the best gene. We will repeat these steps for a number equal to 10 of independent populations for each data set and each value of P in it, the parameter, uh, between 0, 1, and 0 0.6. Let me show you the results obtained for the genetic algorithm. Here we can see the distribution of the qualities in terms of IROC of the base learners here in orange or in blue for the ensembles, so our, our ensembles produced by the genetic algorithm between generation zero to generation nine uh, for each one of the data sets. What we can see here is that 10 generations were sufficient to reach uh, some sort of convergence of the algorithm. Moreover, we can see that the last uh, generation, the, the individuals at the last generation have a distribution in terms of IUROC that are higher than the best possible methods of the base learners. So at the end of these 10 generations, we have uh, sufficient good quality in terms of uh, ensembles. Then we will take all these uh, individuals, the best individuals of each run uh, in each data set for each value of the P in it. Uh, and we can constitute a um, matrix like this. And this matrix can be seen as a transaction data set. In practice, each GRN inference method here in column can be seen as an item and individuals, so the best individuals can be seen uh, in as uh, the item sets, each, each row here. And the population then is a transaction data set. We can compute the support of an item set M, uh, which is a set of, of, um, of methods 
uh, by taking the number of individuals that incorporate those methods divided by the total size of the population. We will say that uh, this item set M, this set of, of uh, method M is a frequent item set. If it's support, it's, it's higher than a given threshold. And we will say that it's a maximal frequent item set if there exists no other frequent item set that contains already the methods in M. In practice, we use the FP max algorithm with a, a threshold equal to 0 0.2. Uh, in practice, we obtain seven uh, maximal frequent item set. Three of them are only based on three based methods. These three um, ensembles were mainly selected on the in silico data set. And they tend to have uh, very good results here in blue for the in silico data set, but then they have poor results in the other uh, real data sets. Uh, we have another family of methods based on the Bayesian reach regressor, uh, the SVM regressor, and a tree-based method. This uh, ensemble was selected mainly in the real data sets, and it tends to have very good results for the real data set and uh, average results, decent results for the in silico data set. So this last family is the most promising one. Now let me uh, show you this um, representation of the base learners in a principal component analysis in order to understand uh, why this ensemble could be interesting. Um, so in this representation, uh, using a method designed by Marbach et al., um, the methods that are close in this representation are likely to share the same intrinsic biases. And methods that are far away uh, are likely to be uh, quite diverse. Here we can see a cluster of the methods based on trees and also the stability-based methods. Another cluster here for the correlation measures um, and uh, the Bayesian reach score as an outlier and the SVMs also far away from the other methods. Therefore, this combination of BRS, SVM, and the trees is a diverse method. Um, and then this, uh, this ensemble is likely to help to compensate the inner biases of each one of the methods. Uh, then uh, we can um, propose some other combinations. We can take uh, one of the two SVMs, not only the regressor, but also the, the classification one, for example, the BRS, one method based on trees or um, one method based on uh, the stability. Uh, or another family that we can test is SVM plus BRS plus the trees or the stability and a correlation method since, it's, since correlations are far away from the other um, uh, methods. We have tested this in order to check our hypothesis. And what we can see here is that the family of methods uh, with BRS, SVM, and an ensemble method based on trees or stability of linear regressors, or the same thing, but adding a correlation measure tend to output much better results than the Dream5 community in terms of IROC and also in terms of IUPR. Moreover, um, the two families that were tested do not uh, show major differences in terms of quality. So adding a correlation method does not seem to improve the quality. And though, um, and thus, um, small ensembles with three methods or four methods are sufficient to outperform the large Dream5 community. As a summary, small and diverse ensembles of methods could be sufficient to improve the prediction quality, to have robust results across different data sets limiting the computational requirements. And uh, finally, our combination of the Bayesian reach regressor, an SVM, and a method based on trees is uh, an efficient GRN inference ensemble candidate that can be used in future works. Thank you very much for your attention.